You're tuned in to The Andrew Lawton Show. After a day-long caucus meeting, the Conservative caucus voted to expel Derek Sloan, the Member of Parliament for Hastings, Lennox and Addington, and a former leadership candidate from the Conservative caucus. Derek Sloan joins me on the line now. Derek, thank you for coming on so quickly. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. This is something that for a lot of conservatives who were told by Aaron O'Toole during the leadership that they had a place regardless of whether they were social conservatives or not, how are they supposed to take what's happened in the last two days and and specifically today? Well, this is bogus. Um, What what has happened today with my expulsion from caucus is Aaron O'Toole and the other caucus members are saying... Derek, not only do we want you in the party, we don't want anyone like you in the party. And, you know, they're going to come out with all their communications and they're going to say this. They're going to say, oh, it's not about Derek's beliefs. That's fine. It's just about his personality. But I'm telling you, Andrew, the, 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 the sort of persona that I have publicly uh, attracts a large portion of our base. The issues I stand for, the persona that I have. And if they think that this is just about me, they've got another thing coming. This is a slap in the face to a large section of our base. I want to read a statement that was just released moments ago by Aaron O'Toole. He says the Conservative caucus voted to remove Derek Sloan not because of one specific event, but because of a pattern of destructive behavior involving multiple incidents and disrespect towards the Conservative team for over a year. What's he referring to? Well, they're, ref- they're referring to basically everything that you've seen throughout the campaign. So when I uh, called out Dr. Tam for what I believe to be, uh, you know, undue connection to the World Health Organization, that was uh, that was considered to be, you know, beyond the pale. That was, oh, that's racist. That's this. When I it, basically everything else I've done. But I'll tell you, the last thing that really got under their skin is I have been actively organizing for this upcoming convention. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they know that I have recruited many, many, many delegates, and they were scared. And so there, you know, this, this whole thing about, you know, uh, um, you know, not listening to other people. Um, so when I was emailing and trying to get conventions to go to delegates, other MPs would be like, oh, well, you know, why are you emailing into my riding? And why are you doing this? Nobody has a monopoly on their riding. Uh, you as a Canadian, I as a Canadian, we have the right to encourage political participation. And, you know, some of these MPs were upset that, you know, basically I had more sway in their riding than they did. And they uh, they got rid of me because of that. And and uh, obviously they don't agree with the the, uh, the different things that I stand for. So, you know, he'll find a, um, you know, a politically correct version of a socially conservative person or any of the other things maybe that I've stood for. And I've stood for things far beyond just social conservatism. Um, but this is about uh, the values that I stand for. Uh, You know, being against a Paris Agreement, being against this net zero stuff and my influence at the convention. They were afraid that it was going to be a Derek Sloan convention and they pulled the plug. This is a direct affront to grassroots engagement. Do you know how much support, if any, you had in caucus in today's vote? I was not uh, privy to the numbers, unfortunately. It was uh, no, I, I don't believe anybody other than the caucus chair knows the final numbers. Now, does that in and of itself disturb you, or is that just how the process is supposed to work? You know, I I know the caucus chair well, and he's an honorable person, Tom Kimmich. Uh, So I certainly trust the results. I would have preferred to get an idea of, you know, how close it was. Um, But unfortunately, I, I, I won't know that. Do you think from private conversations you've had with MPs in the Conservative caucus that this was literally just about getting a a SOCON out? Or did you actually get support from non-social conservatives privately that said they didn't like the process? They didn't like that you were being blamed for someone who happened to donate alongside 12,999 other people to your campaign? Yeah, I mean, listen, there were a lot of people that were upset by this for sure. The, the problem is, is that Aaron O'Toole sort of crossed the Rubicon when he made the public statement that he was behind this. So then the caucus literally had to say, well, listen, I don't really want to kick Derek out. But if I don't, then we, we show weakness to the to the public. So let's say they voted to keep me in. Then the press cycle would have been Aaron O'Toole doesn't even have control over his own party. They don't even like, you know, they don't uh, trust his judgment. So he he took the strongest step possible to eliminate me by doing a full frontal assault publicly. And so I'm sure there's a lot of people that wouldn't have done this in, in other circumstances that felt kind of compelled 
you know, it's still a wrong decision, but they felt compelled because of his doubling down in that in that way. Now, that statement I shared a couple of moments ago from Aaron O'Toole that says this is all part of a pattern, you've said this is stuff that's already been made public, nothing unique uh, apart from that. Were you put on notice previously? Had you been told that you were on thin ice and had to behave a certain way to stay in caucus? Or has this ejection really been, officially anyway, I mean, you, you might have had inklings, but has this ejection really been an escalation from zero to 100? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you as, as best as I can sort of what has happened. So um, there, is, there have been people who have been hostile to me, a minority of people ever since the leadership. It's a combination of not liking my values, thinking I'm, you know, too uh, sort of uh, direct or outspoken on certain things. Um, so that is, you know, basically put me in, in their bad books just perennially. After the leadership, I sent out two fundraising emails, one for my EDA, one for my riding, one for my leadership. Now, I have every right to do that. I've, I've created a large list through the campaign, but obviously those emails go to other ridings and I was collecting money from people in other ridings. Now, these are people that may not have donated to that other person anyways, but uh, MPs are very cagey about their territory. So they're like, well, you know, Derek, you shouldn't be doing this. And I said, listen, I have to fundraise to you know, finalize some of my last leadership debts. It's the law and this is my list. And frankly, for my EDA, I, I had to raise some money, too, to be able to be, you know, acclaimed as a candidate. So those are the those are two of the quote unquote, um, you know, bad things that I've done. And the third was sponsoring that petition, which, again, uh, a lot of these conservatives are just scared to death of bad press. So, you know, these kinds of things, there were some rumblings about, oh, you know, Derek's always getting us in the news. It's always something, you know, whatever. Uh, and then this sort of orchestrated attempt at the end which, as I said, was related to my uh, uh, strength going into the convention, sort of pushed some people over the edge. But um, nothing has happened along the way uh, that would in any way be uh, inappropriate. I've, I've just explained to you uh, uh, any charge that was leveled at me. So let me ask you then where you go from here, because you sent out a, an email to your supporters in which you said, don't rip up your memberships, still be a part of the party, still go to the convention, the virtual convention up. Why do you want this to happen? Why are you not ripping up your membership at this point? Well, listen, uh, I'm still a conservative. I may not be technically capital C conservative, according to, you know, the, the, the powers that be in Ottawa, but the conservative party has left me. I did not leave the conservative party. And our membership is a lot more like me than they are like Aaron O'Toole. And frankly, I think the only reason he won is because, yeah, I was a new face. Leslie Lewis was a new face. And Aaron O'Toole was like, oh, I'm with you guys. I, I stand up for Derek. I stand up for Leslie. And he juxtaposed himself against Peter McKay. But, you know, we're, we're at base purely on sort of the persona and the values, uh, uh, you know, experience aside. I believe someone like Leslie and I very easily could have won if experience and, and so forth were equal. So listen, this is something that, uh, you know, our base reflects is a lot more like me than they are like Aaron O'Toole. And they're going to learn that quickly. I will say this in the caucus call, what many people were concerned about is they were saying, guys, I'm getting calls, not just from like the local pro-life dude, but from some of my like most hardcore supporters, uh, board members, donors, and they're livid. So this is something that is really going to uh, rip the party. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's going to damage the party for, for certain. You and I spoke in the leadership race a couple of times about cancel culture and, and free speech, and you're very aware of the cultural battle, battles around this. And one thing that I, I find really unsettling, even if people are, are used to just the left throwing around slurs and names and all of that, to have it come from within your own party and within your own movement, and the, especially the, the justification that Aaron O'Toole used to initiate this process, which was that racism has no place in the party, he didn't call you a racist, but was ejecting you in the same breath as he was saying that he needed to take a stand against racism. Does that sting? Does that sting for you? Uh, not really. It, it just validates sort of the experience that I've had over the last nine months. And it's just been basically this. It's been amazing acceptance from grassroots conservatives and continual uh, backbiting and trying to tie my hands behind my back within the, the MPs that are there. The, so many of these guys think that they're little princes that, that rule their little riding fiefdom and they can come to Ottawa and do whatever it is that they want. It's disgusting. 
These people were put there by the, uh, their local party members, by their local constituents. And they, there's, there's a complete disconnect. So we will see who speaks for the membership uh, uh, leading into the convention and beyond. But they've made a grave error. Would you rejoin the caucus if invited, if the party had a mea culpa? I don't expect that that would happen under the current leadership. They, they're, they're of a mind that they kind of have to, you know, show a, a, a unity, show a, a face of strength and all that. And they wouldn't be able to do that based on what they've done. But I don't I, I, I'm not making any decisions today about what what I might or might not do. Just before I let you go here, Derek, what do you want to tell your supporters? I know a lot of people, even those who might not have been your supporter in the leadership race, have really come around or are tweeting about their support for you, wanting to go to the convention to stand up for some of the values. What do you want to say to those people right now who, by your indication, seem to make up the party more than the voices in Ottawa do? Stay involved. Keep your membership. Go to convention. And... Uh... And we're going to we're going to do a lot of good there. And this is this is just uh, this is, um, you know, some some rumblings. But we are going to uh, go to convention. We're going to do well there. When it comes to me personally, I'm going to stay fighting for all the values I fought for before. Family values, uh, you know, against the Paris Agreement and this climate alarmism, uh, the excessive uh, government lockdowns, which our party has been completely silent on. They haven't said a word about it. All they can talk about <laughs> is, oh, a vaccine this, vaccine that, we need more vaccines. Well, listen, there's a lot more going on here right now than just getting a vaccine. There is a real conversation to be had about the government control and the, uh, the, the, the true way to deal with this thing here. So they have been uh, missing in action, and that's why they're, not, they're barely even registering right now on, on the public radar. And they'll learn soon enough the mistake they've made. Independent Member of Parliament Derek Sloan. Derek, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for listening to The Andrew Lawton Show. Support the program by donating to True North at www.tnc.news.